do weird things like that. Could you help him, Professor? Yeah, please help me, Professor. I, I wouldn't be a good vampire. I faint at the sight of blood. I'll starve to death. Right, Gilligan, you just try to calm yourself. Skipper, you better tell me exactly what happened. Uh, something bit Gilligan on the neck? Exactly, see? It, it was in a cave, and a big vampire bat came out and bit him right on the neck there. And now when there's a full moon, he's going to turn into a vampire. Nonsense. Get in there and let the girls patch you up. I'll go get some shovels so we can close up the cave. Yeah, we don't want those bastards to get out of the cave. Was it? Gilligan, shh, remember now what the professor said. Gilligan! Gilligan, little buddy, I've got great news for you. You're all right. You weren't bitten by a vampire bat. You were bitten by a fruit bat. Gilligan? Dear good pals, I am running away to save your lives. Don't try to find me, because if you do, I'll just stick my fangs in your neck, and that could wreck our friendship. <laughs> Bye forever, your friend Gilligan, the vampire. <laughs> Gilligan, why'd you do a dumb thing like that? P.S. This was the only dumb thing I could think of doing. <laughs> Professor! Professor! This is serious. Gilligan isn't rational in his present state. Yes, of course, Professor, but he wouldn't stand a chance in the jungle all night. Yeah, we've got to find him before it gets dark. I suggest we organize search parties immediately. All right, let's go. Yes, yes. Lovey, I think you and I better go by way of our hut. Stream. There he was, me. Gilligan, did you say you looked across the stream? Yeah, on the other side. May I suggest, Gilligan, that your conscience became temporarily unable to handle the guilt of your misdemeanor, so you fantasize an ego image displacement out of your own reflection? May I suggest that? You may suggest that. But I won't understand it. Thank you, see, Mrs. Howell. Thank you for what? For telling me I look like Gilligan and I sound like Gilligan. <laughs> People say thanks for the strangest things. <laughs> Gilligan. Even with all sorts of blades. My grandfather had one like that. It has all kinds of attachments. Hey, like Gilligan. A screwdriver and a can Never of... mind, Gilligan. Perhaps we should investigate this. Before lunch, not even Perry Mason investigates on an empty stomach. <laughs> Come on now, Professor. Do you really think someone else is on this island? Shiny gold pocket knife. <laughs> Well, so I went that way. No, I just remembered. I just remembered. I went that way. I think. Well, why don't we separate and each take a different direction? Good idea, Professor. Now, if anybody sees anything or finds anything, just yell. Especially somebody that looks like me holding a shiny gold pocket knife. Especially that. <laughs> Showing some visiting royalty, a poverty pocket. This is how sugar bees have to come out of the ground before you can put them in cans. Ooh, what a perfectly ghastly idea. Well, you see, we plant them all on the ground. I hope you're using the editorial we. Thurston means you can't expect a howl to dig in the ground. But you have to eat. <laughs> My favorite is spinach. Oh, my favorite doesn't seem to be here. Well, spinach, and cucumber, truffles. Don't you know what a truffle is? No, we never grew any in Kansas. A truffle is a subterranean tube that runs into a fungus. <laughs> that runs into a fungus? What? Uh, I wish the professor would learn to speak English. <laughs> Radishes, Swiss chard, carrots! You like carrots? Oh, like them, I love them. Well, Gilligan, they're awfully good for you. Where the more you eat, the better your eyesight. Everybody knows that carrots are good for your eyes. Oh, certainly. After all, did you ever see a rabbit wearing glasses? <laughs> Wide mission. Remember that. Mr. Howell, a rescue plane is coming to get him. He's going to take us along, so do what he wants. No, but <laughs> please. Santa Lucia, Santa Lucia. Never mind the floor show, kid.
could get me some water. Sure, sure I bring you water. Eh, uh, what do you care about the poor starving people? So long as you stuff yourself with water, eh? Huh? Uh, you want a water? I don't have a dresser to my name. What's that you're wearing? This, this is a dresser that I share with my four sisters. <laughs> Only one of us can leave the house at a time, and you want water. All right, forget the water. Just bring me some bread. Bread? Hey, now I want some bread. Starving in the Piazza de Steve Reeves, and you want a bread. All right, I get you bread. You stuff your fat face with bread. Mamma mia, ma chi è questo stupido? <laughs> I think I saw this in a picture once. <laughs> I bring you bread. I bring you bread. That's <laughs> too much. Act this. Act this. And say you see a little hope for me to fight or flee, to fight or flee. I ask myself to be or not to be. He asked to be. Or not to. It's doctor within a thousand miles of here. I feel like I've been locked all night in a jewelry store. Imagine a man giving a girl all of this and asking nothing in return. That's our Gilligan. Oh. 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 Oh, it's hopeless. I guess we're just going to be stuck this way forever. <laughs> You know, speaking of missing articles, my, my wallet is missing. Oh, darling, I was talking about something important. After all, what's in a wallet? Only money. <laughs> that's so true, my dear, that's so true. Uh, whatever is that? It looks like a hubcap. Gilligan found this in a cave and gave it to me. Obviously costume jewelry. Well, obviously. Anything real would come from Fifth Avenue. <laughs> uh, uh, come in. <laughs> What marvelous work these natives did, Thurston. They really were way ahead of their time. Yes, but what are they? Well, obviously a pair of bookends. Books weren't invented then. Well, that's what I said. They were way ahead of their time. <laughs> <laughs> what you had seen. <laughs> Now, an excellent book Skipper, has my been written. getting hot. Yeah, so are mine. This... He ever was. I didn't know he could sleep standing up. <laughs> Not sleepy. Oh, yeah, his eyes are open. <laughs> Professor? Professor? Maybe I should get an alarm clock or go cock a doodle doo. It's not sleeping. Well, this belt is normal too. Darling, I brought you some hot soup. No, 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 no. Dear, is it starve a cold and feed a fever or feed a fever and starve a cold? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Why do you get such complicated diseases? <laughs> Professor, I brought some oxygen from the boat. Well, that won't be necessary, Skipper. Oh, Professor, you've got to help me. Call a specialist, develop a new serum, but you, you've got to save poor little me. Oh, that old smart. <laughs> Terms. Well, we've been over almost every inch of this island, and we're not even sure that Lord Beasley has even seen a pussycat swallowtail yet. Well, where else can he find to look? Good heavens. Looking for a butterfly? 
die under the water? That's what I call a determined man. That's what I call a determined nut. <laughs> Yesterday we looked here and here. Uh, good evening, Lord Beasley. May I come in? And the day before we looked here. Uh, oh, thank you very much. May I say that you look like a million dollars? Would you like to try for two million? <laughs> now we've also looked here. Uh, Lord Beasley, I'm a very wealthy man, and to get me off this island, I'll happily pay you $100,000. Now, we've looked by the cove. Uh, happily, uh, $200,000. Yes, 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 by the bat cage. And happily, $300,000. Did I look there? Yes, I did. Lord Beasley, would you at least give me the courtesy of listening when I'm trying to bribe you? Now, the question is, where shall I look again? Ah! Uh, please listen to me. The center of the island. <laughs> Heavens, I've had an appendectomy. <laughs> the truth, Professor. I can take it now. What's wrong with my little buddy? Well, I was telling you the truth before. And I... But the truth, the real truth. But I've told you the real truth. No holes barred. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Now blurt it out. <laughs> the Gabor sister struck out. What a shame. Gilligan is just too young to be old. Can't you think of anything, Professor? I'm sorry, Skipper. I... I thought of something, <laughs> of all people. Well, what is it, Mrs. Howell? Well, some women, when their hair turns gray, dye it another color. I think, I think you've got something there. Uh, naturally, I never have to dye my hair. <laughs> but uh, the women who do feel much younger. It might work, that is, if he doesn't know about it. I can get the ingredients from vegetable coloring for a good brown hair dye. Great. Now, we'll wait until later tonight when Gilligan's asleep. Then Mrs. Howell can apply it to his hair. When he wakes up in the morning with brown hair, he'll feel like a new man. A new young man. Oh, I sure hope so. Because if he says to me once more, look both ways before you cross the street, sonny, I'll... <laughs> Pardon me, Professor, but it does kind of get me right there. <laughs> All these years in the island, we're finally building a raft. I mean, what a dumb thing. 